This is the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE 5G. A fan edition according to Samsung and with the mandatory 5G in the name because of 2020 standards. But in a world where we already have a Galaxy S20, a Galaxy S20 Plus, and even a Galaxy S20 Ultra, all with 5G, it's important to understand where this phone fits in. See, this year Samsung decided to follow on Apple's old strategy from years ago. Instead of giving us some kind of affordable flagship, a la iPhone XR, 11, or 12, which we did get with the Galaxy S10e at some point, the company decided to go all expensive in the spring with the S20 and keep the S10 for another year as the budget alternative. Not sure how that went, but I can't say that it went bad because this one be the first time that Samsung launches a lighter version of their flagship in the fall. I actually debate why I even call this a fan edition. It might be because it brings some things people have asked for, even at the expense of some controversial moves to keep the price down. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive into our full review. <laughs> I think it's important to note that Samsung has a smartphone for pretty much every price point. Whether you're looking for anything around $100 or all the way up to 2000 bucks, you can pick your poison. The Galaxy S20 FE in paper would even sound like a perfect competitor to the iPhone 11 or 12, given that they share similar price points. But in many ways, the FE is actually a better phone. Like the iPhone 11 and 12, this phone is clearly targeting a younger audience. There are a crazy six color options to choose from. I actually like the cloud red or cloud white most, but I've been drifting more to the elegance of this darker tone of blue. And as for the elephant in the room, yes, this is plastic, but I'd say the most matte glass looking and feeling finish I've ever seen. And seriously, I do think that this would do a better job at aging than glass, since you know that that does break. Actually, if you look close, this phone is seriously like a smaller version of the controversial Galaxy Note 20, with a price that finally does match what you're getting. Just pick your color variant wisely, as fingerprint smudges are still a thing. My advice is don't risk it. Channel sponsor Subcase has you covered. The award-winning UB Pro is always a good choice that provides durability and functionality. I'll link to them in the description. I think the bigger story about this phone is what it borrows from the flagship and actually what it improves. For example, internals. Like its most expensive brothers, we do have the same Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 powering the show. The differences are that there is a variant that starts at 6 gigabytes of RAM, but there's also a matching option with 8 gigs and either 128 or 256 gigs of expandable storage. It brings all the same Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, and IP68 water and dust resistance. Same reverse wireless charging and even fast charging via wire, though the power delivery option is not included in the box. Actually, this phone even has a larger battery than the standard S20, which matches more the S20+. Plus. Also, keep in mind that you will have to pick your flavor of 5G, which also defines the price tag. And then there's the screen. We have been begging Samsung for the longest time for a Galaxy S with a flat display, and uh, here it is. This is a 6.5-inch Super AMOLED display that offers 1080p plus resolution at a tall 20 by 9 aspect ratio. Colors are crisp, viewing angles are actually also really good, and about the only thing you'll notice is more bezels and no curves when compared to the S20s. Yes, it is capable of 120Hz refresh rate, it supports HDR10+, and content consumption is fabulous thanks to some very loud dual-firing speakers. I've signed every single document I've received for the past About the only thing to complain about is the punch hole at the top, which oddly has this like reflective coating that's very noticeable. Like instead of trying to hide it, it's like if it keeps calling at you. But then by contrast, we actually do have an optical fingerprint scanner on this display, so that's a huge plus. So far, the specs are here, the screen is here, the hardware is almost here, and I'd even say that the software is almost here too. We're already at a time when Android 11 is launching everywhere, but uh, this is One UI 2.5 on top of Android 10. Still, the experience is as Samsung as I actually like. I'm a huge fan of One UI aesthetics. I like how they're mostly at the bottom to help one-handed use. I depend on edge menus every day for quick multitasking. And about the only thing I don't like is that the speed of this phone is not actually noticeable because of the excessive animations 
of the user interface. That said, if you move into applications like Chrome, you will see the display be fast and smooth. And yes, as expected, this phone is full of a ton of services you'll want to disable on day one, like Bixby and Samsung Daily. I can't wait for all these services to become optional. But other than that, I'd say that the experience has actually been delightful. Phone calls are great thanks to a very loud earpiece. Data speeds are to be expected on T-Mobile Sub-6 right now. And battery life is quite impressive. I actually can end the day without a problem with this phone, which is not something you can say about every Samsung Galaxy. Pretty much the last topic to discuss is the camera, and uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover. I mean, the camera specifications seem pretty decent if you look at the numbers, and you can even say that this phone has more megapixels on the selfie camera than even the S20 and S20+. Plus. Now, in real-world use, I'll tell you that I'm pretty impressed by stills, even in not-so-bright conditions. Samsung shows restraint in not overdoing the colors, and there's a fair amount of detail in the shots. You also have the advantage of three focal lengths in case you want to go ultra-wide or telephoto. My advice, though, is don't go beyond 3x zoom, because the specs can claim 30x all they want. Even 10x here is a struggle. Now, night mode is where things get tricky. You get the mode in all focal lengths and even from the selfie camera, but the processing takes a bit and the results from the ultra wide and the telephoto are actually not that usable. I'd stick mostly to night mode from the primary shooter and actually even the selfie camera the most. But then speaking of selfies, these portrait shots are really good, doing a better job than most at handling separation and in doing skin tones well once you disable all the beauty modes that come predefined even on the regular selfies. Sadly, even if this phone can do 4K at 60 and actually allows you to switch focal lengths and can even do cinematic 21 by 9, the results are just okay from the primary shooters, with this phone fumbling with focus most of the times in the telephoto and with the typical warping that you notice while you walk. And honestly, I have no clue why, but if you want to do 4K from the selfie shooter, stabilization grays out. So yeah, this is not a vlogging phone by any means. To conclude, can I just say that I was totally not expecting to like this phone at first? As I mentioned earlier, it looks like a smaller Galaxy Note 20, it's made of the same materials, and really the only difference is that it's now priced accordingly. And let's be honest, back in the day nobody really complained about Nokia Lumia's being polycarbonate, and that's mainly because of Nokia's execution. Samsung calls this glastic, and uh, well, it may be plastic, but it does look like glass. This doesn't look like a cheap phone, it doesn't feel like a cheap phone, and it doesn't behave like a cheap phone, and yet it's priced like one. I feel in the current world situation, it's unrealistic for companies to pretend that people are ready to spend thousands of dollars in a smartphone when they can get a very similar, if not the same, experience on a budget. In my opinion, this is exactly what this phone is, what consumers need right now. The Galaxy S20 FE might have the most misleading name ever, unless you consider that this might also be the way to create new fans. It's a device I have no problem recommending as actually one of the best picks for this category. Let us know what you think about the Galaxy S20 FE in the comments down below, and while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow me on my personal handles to see me discover and try new things. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.